Hi everyone, my name is Johanna and uh, I work as a freelancing creative technologist. And what that means, I've been basically working as a programmer and also had a role of technical director in the digital production industry for about 10 years. And I work with a lot of different projects, like traditional websites, but lately usually a lot of hardware related projects as well. Um, some audiovisual installations and also some um, more experimental, like biosensor. Um, this is an EEG headset uh, project. Um, so yeah, I do a lot of different things, basically. Um, but I'm not here to talk to you about any of those. Um, I'm going to share an experience I had from a science uh, hackathon in Berlin. I'm based in Stockholm, um, but I also do live in Berlin like part time. Um, and um, okay, so um, science hacking. What is science hacking? I, it's basically uh, the collaboration between programmers and artists and designers together with uh, scientists in order to make something new together. Um, could be like a life saving helmet for firemen basically using all of the sensors available for Arduinos. Or um, it can be a do-it-yourself um, fluorometer used for medicine use. Or it could also be something more uh, important, like solving the problem of not having daylight during winter time. <laughs> but before uh, talking about my own uh, science project, science hackathon project, um, I'm going to give you a quick background. Um, so this was last November, uh, me sitting uh, with a friend in my studio in Berlin. It's like an arts collective called the Lab. Um, and we were really fascinated by this kind of like um, physics experiments uh, being made by optical illusions of uh, strobe effects or shutter effects. And we were watching tons of these uh, YouTube videos and we were like, this is so cool and we wanted to make an arts installation based on this. And this is like experiments that you would do in a um, science class in school. Um, and we thought it would be a simple thing to just, we bought some spinning motors and some LED lights and set up a prototype, uh, but it didn't work at all. <laughs> um, and we were quite disappointed. Um, but luckily enough, uh, at the same time, Science Hack Day in Berlin were coming up. And this is really, really funny because this is a proposed uh, project to do at the science hackathon uh, and they looked for people that could program Arduino, which I can. And they basically say, uh, in science and education is common, blah, 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 blah. For our projects, we build our own strobe light and use it for several optical illusions. It would be super fancy if the optical illusions would be responsive to music or other sound. And this is more or less me and my friend's idea that we wanted to do at our studio. So it was a perfect match. And it was a team of physicists. Um, they run a like student uh, organization called La Present, and they made this uh, strobe animated sculpture. And what it basically is is a 3D printed plastic shape that you put on a really fast spinning motor, and then you shoot a strobe light at it, and you see this optical um, illusion of it being moving. So this is not like CG or animated; it's a real, uh, real plastic object just spinning really fast. And <coughs> So this is the start, so back to the actual hackathon. Uh, we obviously teamed up um, as a group, and our goal was to create a sound-controlled strobe animated sculpture. And it was probably the longest project name <laughs> I ever had, uh, ever. Um, this, this really explains the effect of the strobe light. You can see that this is just a really, really fast-spinning plastic thing. As soon as you turn on the strobe light, you get this effect. And this is really... Like, this is what we didn't achieve to do at our own uh, studio uh, because it's really, really precise. You have to match the frequency of the strobe light exact to the rotation um, of the motor. Um, and you also really need, real, uh, need really fast spinning motors. This is like 40, 40 hertz frequency. Um, and uh, the goal was to make it sound control, so we needed a bit of detection. So um, we used Arduino and a sound sensor, and basically, yeah, we made a simple beat detection. And the goal was to make this plastic thing dance to music, so you wanted it to, like, every time a beat was detected, you wanted to, like, alternate um, the rotation, um, um, 
angle of the cube. So yeah, <coughs> we were uh, building this and everything went really well and the hackathon was two days and the first day we basically had this thing going and we were really uh, proud and happy, like it was turned out to be f fairly easy even though there was some serious like science hacking <laughs> being done and uh, the, the, like, the calculations of the frequency in order to, like basically what you do is to make it rotate, you have to shift the frequency of the strobe light a tiny bit faster or a tiny bit slower than the rot frequency of the spinning motor. And this is so precise, so the morning before the final presentation of the hackathon, um, we started it again, and it was just the blurry spinning thing. And I left it, it was working and the day before, and I was like, what happened? Like, is the motor like off sync or something? And we calibrate everything again and try. And I had like five people, like the whole team standing over my shoulder, like questioning all the like things I wrote in the code. And I was like, I rewrote the code like five times. They having like seen exactly what I did. I was like, it should work. And then I found out that me, I had a, um, a log from the Arduino printing out a log to the monitor and that fucked up the whole um, calculation of the interval of the strobe. So we're talking like microseconds uh, preciseness. Um, but yeah, so yeah, we made a dancing plastic sculpture. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to share this uh, with you, like it's not a real project, it's a prototype thing and it was made uh, just over two days, and, but for me it was such a valuable experience. Um, like looking at, I already had ideas of making an arch project with a similar concept and like actually working with a physicist that had a deep uh, level knowledge about this, uh, making it so much more interesting for me and like I helped them and they like invited me to their like physics lab and everything and it was, yeah, it was an amazing um, weekend. So I would recommend uh, if you ever come across something like science hacking. Thank you.